F-8 Crusader, America's last gunfighter. The Cold War era was one of the most fascinating times for military aircraft development. The escalating tensions between the West and the Soviet Union meant that aircraft manufacturers kept pushing the boundaries to ensure that they all stayed ahead of each other. Even if sometimes that meant there were a few failures along the way. But the period did give us some incredible aircraft, such as the Avro Vulcan, the F-4 Phantom, and the MiG-25 Foxbat. Some of these great aircraft, though, seem to get overshadowed by some of their counterparts. The Vought F-8 Crusader feels like one of those aircraft. First flying in March 1955, the F-8 Crusader was one of the finest carrier-based fighter jets to ever emerge from the United States. It earned the nickname the last of the gunfighters as it was the final American fighter built with guns as its primary weapon. It would see use in the Vietnam War and during the Cuban Missile Crisis as a recon aircraft, but its Vietnam exploits aren't as well known as those of the F-4 Phantom. The F-8 Crusader, though, was one of the very best jet fighters to come from the United States. Development of the F-8 Crusader The need for the F-8 was born out of a requirement by the U.S. Navy for a new fighter that could have a top speed of at least Mach 1.2. Guns were still to be required as the primary weapon, but the Korean War had alerted the Americans to the fact that the 50 caliber machine gun would no longer suffice. As such, 20 mm cannons would be considered the primary armament of this new aircraft. Vought had already built plenty of fighters and jet aircraft for U.S. service, so they were more than ready to build the F-8. The Crusader was powered by a Pratt & Whitney J-57 turbojet with an afterburner and it became the first jet fighter in the United States to reach 1,000 miles per hour, which was an achievement in itself. Its top speed was an impressive 1,227 miles per hour, or Mach 1.8. Vought had to fend off some major competition, though, as it was developing the Crusader. Grumman had built the F-11 Tiger, an upgraded version of the McDonnell F-3H Demon, but the Tiger would only be in service for around five years. The F-100 Super Sabre was so hastily modified to become the Super Fury carrier-based fighter, but again it ultimately could not compete with the Crusader. The F-8 would duly enter active service with the U.S. Navy in 1957. The XF-8U-3 was a highly modified offshoot of the F-8 Crusader line, featuring a revised air intake, nose cone assembly, and large folding ventral strakes under the tail. This version became known as Crusader 3, following the original F-8A, Crusader 1, and the F-8C, Crusader 2 models. The prototypes competed unsuccessfully against the McDonnell Douglas offering that would eventually become the fabled F-4 Phantom II fighter. The F-8 Crusader in Service once the Crusader entered U.S. Navy service, it became a day fighter operating from American Navy carriers. Remarkably, the Crusader would be the first post-Korean War aircraft that the Navy would fly for a relatively long time. A lot of post-Korean aircraft only served with the various naval squadrons for a short period before being replaced. The Crusader would get its first real taste of action in the Vietnam War, with aircraft from the USS Hancock tangling with North Vietnamese MiG-17s in April 1965. The Crusader had entered combat service at an interesting point in time. Many top U.S. officials believed that the advent of air-to-air -air missiles meant the era of the dogfight was over, but the agility of the F-8 and the fact that its guns were perfect for close-quarters fighting meant the era of the dogfighter was definitely not over. This is when it earned the last gunfighter moniker. Remarkably though, the F-8 only scored four victories with its cannons, the rest coming with AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles. But the way air battles had evolved over Vietnam still showed that a gun or cannon was vital for air-to-air -air combat. Retirement from U.S. Navy Service all good things must come to an end, however, and in 1976, the F-8 was retired from U.S. Navy service after almost two decades of use. 
This was amazingly a first for a naval fighter. The photo reconnaissance version of the F-8, the RF-8, would continue to fly in naval service for another 11 years, with the Lash retiring in 1987. Other air arms would use the F-8 too. The French Navy would fly the Crusader right up until the start of the 21st century, and the Philippine Air Force also used F-8s until 1991. NASA would also take on some modified F-8s for various research purposes. The Last of the Gunfighters It's amazing in itself that the F-8 was the last fighter built to have a gun as its primary armament. But it shows just how far weapons had evolved since the Second World War. The F-8, though, was one of the most recognizable aircraft of its era and was effectively a poster boy for the U.S. Navy aircraft fleet for the better part of 20 years. It proved its worth in combat on multiple occasions and would go down in history as one of the most successful fighters ever built in America. <laughs>